Hello. This week we will be talking about design and construction management, or building project management. In former presentations, this building adaptation process has been explained. In this video, we will zoom in on the third phase, the construction and planning phase. You will learn the basics of building project management. Whether it is a very large and complex project, such as the Elbe Philharmonie in Hamburg, or a very small project like building a garden shed. Every new or renovated building was created as a project. A shed is a simple project, which can be carried out over a couple of weekends by a single person. Larger buildings are complex projects involving many actors, such as clients, developers, project managers, architects, engineers, contractors, suppliers, and individual builders and craftsmen. Plans must be made, permits must be acquired, materials must be specified and purchased. All of this must be planned and coordinated. In short, the project must be managed. In this week, we will lead you through the process of planning a project. You will create a work breakdown structure of all activities and make a resource breakdown structure in which you will assign tasks to different actors. Our purpose is to provide you with a basic understanding of what a building project is and how it is organized. This is only part of the work of a project manager, but it will give you a good idea of the kind of work a project manager does and what sorts of skills and knowledge are needed. Before anyone can go to work on a building, the purpose, the goals, constraints, budget, resources and deliverables with which the building project can be realized must be outlined in a project scope. This scope document becomes the principal tool for ensuring that everyone in the project shares a common understanding of what is to be done. It also helps ensure that one does not get led astray or expand the project beyond its original purpose, a phenomenon called scope creep. As part of the scope, the purpose, the function, and the specific requirements of the building must be clearly outlined and detailed in a brief or a program of requirements. This sets out exactly what criteria the design and eventually the building itself must fulfill if the project is to be considered a success. Once the scope is determined, you can decide how best to procure the project. That is, you will determine in what form you will purchase the labor and the materials required to realize the project. You need to select the right people to fulfill the tasks and activities to get that together will deliver the building. For a garden shed, you might choose to buy a kit at the local garden store and assemble it yourself or with friends. For a larger building, you might hire an architect and then use the architect's designs to make a, a contract with a builder. Most projects are organized traditionally, meaning that the client contracts design services, that is the architect and engineers, separately from the construction services. This allows the tendering of the contractor on the basis of the design as worked out by the architect and engineers, but divides the responsibility for the design from construction. For larger, often public sector projects, you might opt for an integrated delivery process in which a consortium of different actors bid to provide you with the design, construction, operation and maintenance of the building in one package, providing single point responsibility and better protection against cost overruns. Independently of which form of procurement one chooses, the next step is to make a plan for the project. As I said earlier, we will lead you through this process in a series of assignments, each of which will build on the last, to provide you with both an overall view of the project and a plan for its realization.